appreciating for that which is about to do in your life. Appreciate him for what he has done in the past. Appreciate him that he has not punctuated what he has started in your lives. Appreciate him because the Bible says, Sinners shall not stand in the congregation of the righteous. For you to be in his presence this morning, it shows that he counts you worthy. It's not because you are qualified. Can we begin to appreciate his name? Give him praise. He's the mighty God. Elohim, El Shaddai, Adonai. Father, we give you praise. Can we be more intense? Can we be more intentional? Father, we give you praise. Jesus, we say thank you for that which you are about to do in our lives. Thank you for the love you poured upon our heart. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your hand. Thank you for your love. Father, we give you praise. Thank you for every one of us online and on site. Thank you for the set man. Lord, we give you praise. We give you honor. Father, we say that there's no one like you. Jesus, you are worthy to be glorified. Jesus, you are worthy to be glorified. King of kings, Lord of lords, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your intention of making us. Thank you for your patience over our life. Jesus, we give you praise. We give you the honor. Jesus, thank you. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. Jesus, we give you praise. Jesus, we give you praise. Elohim, Adonai, we worship you. Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Father, we will not take your presence for granted. We are not taking your presence for granted. We are intentional. We are intentional. Who is like unto thee? Oh, oh, yeah. Who is like unto thee? Oh, oh, yeah. I'm on the God. this morning and I want us to be intense can you ask Jesus the father sit upon my heart this morning sit upon my heart this morning that when the word is coming forth the word will not be marked but made in my heart that the word will bring me into the place of making the word will bring me into the place of becoming in the name of Jesus father I am hoping before your presence this morning my heart is open. Sit upon my heart. Sit upon my heart. Sit upon my heart. Sit upon my heart, Jesus. That the world will be fruitful and with full potency to bring me into the place of making and in the place of becoming. In the name of Jesus. Sit upon my heart. Sit upon my heart. Sit upon my heart. In the name of Jesus. 
it upon my heart Jesus I give you the ground of my heart this morning my heart is open my heart is open for your invitation I invite you to see it upon the surface of my heart Our center of it all is you that I see. Ah. It's, it's you, you that I see. Our center of it all oh. is you that I see. Ah. It's, it's you, you that I see. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 18. Revelation chapter 3, verse 18. Jesus, that you come and sit upon the surface of our heart. The Bible says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold, tried in the fire, that thou mayst be rich and white raining. Verse, okay. That thou may see, that thou may be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thy eyes. Can I, can I ask you to pray this one more prayer? Father, anoint my eyes to see you. My naked eyes, it doesn't have the capacity to, to, to behold you. But Jesus, I come under the message of your of, of your anointing this morning that you anoint my eyes to see, anoint my eyes to behold in the name of Jesus. Anoint my eyes to see you. The Bible says, When we see him, we shall be like him. Let's pray the Lord to open our eyes this morning to see. Let's open our mouth and pray. In Jesus' name we have prayed. This morning we want to bless the name of the Lord. We want to worship him. I want us to open our hearts to give him the best. The best we can. I pray the Lord is helping us in Jesus' name. At the center of the Lord it's your that I see. It's you that I see. I don't know. Many of us you might not see God at the center of our peace. Maybe we, 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 we think that our being alive today is maybe by our power or by the level of our beauty. But for me this morning, I'm at the center of my peace. It's you that I see. It's you that I see. If it is Him that is at the center of the every center. of our life, I want us to say it at the center of wherever you sing God. But for me, it's you that I see. At the center of my life, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. There is power in your name. Zee! 
song. and worship God this morning. Let's worship Him. Give Him the praise from your heart this wonderful morning. Sing to Him. Can we sing that song once again? Can we sing it from your heart? Lift up your hands and sing that song to God.
We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you, Father. We thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Pambrase lokatola boshi andela kasate balada. Bambro salado ya ketele mozia. Barate seke baratuna kiasi mo konteli ande boko shanda baba. Rade ne mo kuatele boka se faradini atuza. Omaya ya kuabaratina zi. Aka toka barata na si ankoba ya kiasi le bosha. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, we have worship. Amen. Laja mori it's a vow, it's a commitment to you that whether the time is tough, whether the time is easy, you will be the one I will serve. It's a life commitment to your God. Renewed on your altar this morning once again. Ah. And he told me that me, he only must be a Lord. Oh, Lord, commitment to the Lord this morning can you renew your commitment to him this morning renew your commitment to him this morning can you renew your commitment to the Lord this morning oh it is you love forever it is you forever whether by crawling whether by pulling, whether by pushing. Lord, let me die running after you. Even if I fail in running after you, in the path of running after you, it will still be you. Even if I fall in this path, I will rise again, it will still be you. Let your testament come upon me, O God. It will still be you. Even if you slay me, yet I will still follow you. It will be you, Lord. It will still be you, God. It will still be you. Only you are we serve. Only you are we serve. I am no other God. Jesus, only you are we serve. Only you are we serve. I am no other God. I don't know many of you are making that commitment this morning. I say only you are we serve. It is only you, Jesus. Only you, I will say. Only you, Jesus. Only you, 
only you to only you to only you to only you to Jesus only you In Jesus' name, we have worshipped. Please be seated. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, be seated. Amen. Uh, it was a call. It was a call that came so that we can understand there are many happenings recently that has brought us to a point where it appeared as if once a man is talked, is talked forever. And so, God decided to bring this word to us to show us that Amen. There is an ordained escape for every remnant in Zion. Are you with me? So this morning, we want to sit at his feet once again and to hear those things that the Lord had in mind and the things that the Lord had ordained for us. Now, we cannot in one class exhaust it because um, I'm still having another administration this morning in Oro by 12 noon. And another one by 3 p.m. Then we go for the crusade. Amen. Praise God. It's a week of rigorous labor. And next week will be more tough. Man is born unto labor. Are you with me? Man is born unto what? Man is born unto labor. Amen. Walking is not a cause because when God made man, are you with me? The next thing God gave him was walk. Every living must labor. Are you with me? You live to labor. That even when we are redeemed by God, we are not redeemed by good works, but we are redeemed unto good works. Are you with me? So once you become the redeemed of the Lord, you are redeemed to walk. Any redeemed of the Lord that is not laboring, are you with me? Is an unprofitable servant. It's an unprofitable servant. Now listen to me. Your pastor will be rewarded for his labor over your life. Huh? May you get sense to labor. Amen. I believe you understand what I'm saying. Yes, because when your pastor is revered over his labor over your life, then what will you be rewarded for? So you must also labor. Amen. And the proof that you have not been laboring is the sinners around you. Anytime you wake up and you see a man still going to the mosque. And you are in the same neighborhood. It shows you are not laboring. And anytime you go to the street and you see someone still smoking in their hair, it's a proof that you are not laboring. You see, a great number of us, when we see such people, you only shake your head in pity. And you look at them, and a thought rises in your mind that this one will roast in hell. But actually, the rescue from hell is in your hands. But have you told him? How many times have you interceded for him? How many times have you motioned the word of God to that person? Praise God. You are fed with the bread of life so that you can be full of life. And then you impact everyone with the life. No man has found eternal life that won't want to tell another. If what you have found is real, then your convert is the proof. So we are born to labor. We are saved so that we can walk. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, what made me say that to you 
to give you that little exhortation is the way some of you looked at me when I said next week will be tough. You looked at me and said, this man, I hope you won't kill yourself. Die walking. But don't die lazy. Amen. Praise God. It is well. Come with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We just read one verse there, but before we read the one verse, I will try to explain some things to you that 1 Corinthians chapter 10 brought us into the summary. Are you with me? The summary of the journey of the children of Israel from Egypt to the promised land. If I see a say amen. amen. Brought us the summary of what happened to them from Egypt to the promised land. And then it began to show us the dealings of God with them that becomes an exhortation for us upon whom the end of the earth has come. Please all protocol sit down. Get a seat. Don't sit close to the door. Just get a seat. Amen. Now, now, this Corinthians became an exhortation for us upon whom the ends of the earth, the end of time has come. And Paul began to show us what happened to them as a similitude, a pattern for our journey from earth to heaven. From our journey from being redeemed into purpose. Our journey from being saved into that which the Lord had ordained for our lives. So, he brought us this exhortation and then began to show us how they were baptized into Moses in the Red Sea. Are you with me? As a proof of our baptism into Christ. They were made one with Moses as we are made one with Christ. We are baptized into his death so that we can come into his life. Are you with me? And that is not just a symbol. That is a reality. It is a deal. It is a legal transaction. It is what God had perfected. Are you with me? It's not just a matter of a theological truth or a theoretical speakings. It is the reality of every saint of God that in the day when you are baptized, are you with me, you experience. It is not just an activity. It is an experience. So baptism is beyond going underwater. Baptism is an experience of being one with him in death so that you can become one with him in life. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. So the dealings of God with the children of Israel is not isolated from the dealings of God with Moses. Therefore, God expected every single Israelite to respond to the dealings of God in the wilderness the way Moses would respond. Are you following me? Now, are you see, in the same vein, the day we come into him, we are expected to, to experience him so that our response to the issues of life will be his kind of response. Response to temptations, response to trial, response to insult, response, are you with me now, to pressure. And Moses brought us to a place and said, they came out of Egypt. He said, but God was not pleased with all of them. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. Ah, so we come to this place where we saw his beloved son in whom is workplace an official made us to see that we have been accepted in the beloved so we stand on that platform and one expectation of heaven are you with me now is that we have been enlisted in this world to please him that has enlisted us it is a journey not to please him on to pleasing him not pleasing ourselves Are you with me? And if you want to ask and say, oh, can a man please God? There was a record about Enoch that by faith he pleased God. Are you with me? 
that he found a template of a walk with God and by faith he took it up and walked with God to a point that he pleased God. God took him. You see, faith does not just give you material. Faith is believing God on every matter. If he says you are dead with Christ, then you are dead with him. And if he says you are alive with Christ, then you are alive. Are you with me now? You are alive with him. So if he says the life you live now is not your life, it's his life. Then you believe him and then you come into the experience real. It is not that. Are you with me now? You say one thing and then we see another reality. No. No. Now he brought us to a place and then he began to say that these people didn't please him. And he says, see, their life is an example for us. That we should not follow their evil path. He said we should not lost like they lost in the wilderness. Are you with me now? Amen. He said we should not tempt God. And then he said we should not murmur. Don't complain like they did. Hallelujah. He said their carcasses fell in the wilderness. Now if their carcasses fell in the wilderness and they traveled from Egypt and they were baptizing to Moses but they didn't get to the promised land. You see, it is possible, God is saying to us that it is possible you start this spiritual journey and you don't end in heaven. And God is saying this to us. Are you with me? Oh, you are not here. If you are here, say amen. amen. And God is saying this to us that it is possible. That's verse 5. You say many, but with many of them, God was not pleased. For they were overthrown. Where? In the wilderness. One of the accusations of God against them in Deuteronomy chapter 32 will not go there, is that children in womb there is no faith. And that word in womb there is no faith simply also means children that are not faithful. Hallelujah. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. And then you see that a man can start a journey in redemption and God will say, I have designed that you enter a promised land. And that promised land, are you with me? Amen. Amen. Is not just heaven. Is that thing I have redeemed you unto. That will be the reason for your reward in heaven. Do you understand? How many of you understand what I'm saying? Now, so I have redeemed you now to be the wife of a governor. So that you bring to pass the modern template of Esther in the palace of Asuros. Are you following me? A woman that had disciples in the palace of an hating king. A woman that can change a whole empire because she fasted three days. And by that fasting three days, are you with me now? Though she's not the one sitting on the throne, but the scepter of the kingdom is in her hands. So that any time the king wants to do anything, the king will say, Esther, this has been done. What do you say? And, it's, and then she will come with every humility, not as an ostrich, and say, if it please the king, let a decree be given. If it please the king, let the decree be given. And let this happen. And then the king will say, okay, we do it according to your word. Why? Because she has obtained the scepter by following the template of Zion, even in the palace. So, in the days when the church is about to be attacked, and Esther has been planted in the person of you, in the palace to stand for God. You are redeemed unto a purpose. So that that purpose will be the reason for your reward in heaven. Now you see, a man can start the journey of redemption and not enter that purpose. If he doesn't please God. So that man will be overthrown in the wilderness. In that wilderness is your journey into it. The place where God is making you. Exposing you to things. To dealings. But because you don't understand his dealing. You don't please him. So such a man is overthrown. He left Egypt but he entered purpose. Ah, that will not be you. Yeah. Oh, your amen is weak. I said that will not be you. Yeah. Do you get it now? I mean, of you understand what I'm saying. So on those two grounds, are you with me? We, were ex we, are, we are exposed to perils and dangers. And when you look at it very well, you are going to discover that 
the number of people that fell in the wilderness is greater than the number of people that made it to the promised land. Some of you are still sleeping. Are you awake now? I know the crusade has done a lot of things on some of us. Most especially those of you in technical. Amen. You know, carrying those heavy, heavy speakers is not easy. But some of you will think you are carrying load. Ask your pastor. Because they don't leave speaker, you think they are not carrying load. The body of all, all of you carrying speaker is on demand. And I found out that a heavy physical load is light when a man carries body. You don't understand my English. Do you understand my English? That a spiritual body is heavier than a physical load. It drains you like anything. So that's why sometimes you see a pastor under air condition. Yes, he has gray hair. And you ask him what happened. The, the body the man is carrying will make him aged than his age. But, 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 but. I, I know. So don't sleep. Don't sleep. You know all of us are thinking, you didn't know when I slept now. And you didn't know when I wake up. And I will not, from every indication, I will not sleep again till around probably 11 or 11.30. And it will continue like that till next month. God save my soul. Amen. And God save your soul. Amen. You know we are in this together. But let's finish this matter because we have a long way to go today. But we can't finish the matter today. We still come up some other time. Are you with me? They were overthrown in the wilderness. And now you see a greater percentage of the people didn't make it. So you come to a place where you begin to look at this as if the enemy is stronger than the plans of God. How many of you have come to a place where it, it, it appears as if the enemy is stronger than the plans of God? Because, are you with me now? Because you see a man that God put his hands on and said, I want to use this man. Eventually that man will be hijacked by the devil. Oh, are you with me? Now, you have had stories of men that started so very well. And I know you have had such stories that are many. And then they ended up in the hands of the devil and they became worse than when they started. So it makes this journey look so perilous to you. That when you started it, you have no hope of ending well. Though on the physical, you are professing that all is well, but on the inside, the percentage of your fear to your faith is 80 to 20. Now, if you feel that way, raise up your hand. Raise it up very well. Don't, don't, don't be shy. Raise it up very well. Amen. And then, you know something? Even your own practical experiences makes you feel that kind. It's not possible for a man to run this journey. Eh? Are you with me now? And consistently stand till the end. Because even by your experience, even when you have the good intention, you still find yourself falling and rising. Has it happened to you? Yes, Let me see your hands up. Be very sincere. Be very sincere. Be very sincere. You know, only sincere people will make heaven. Be very sincere. Yes, I I'm telling you the truth. Only sincere men will make heaven. Let me see your hands up. Now, you find out that you wanted to start a prayer life and then you started very well and eventually something came. Then that prayer life that has grown to eight hours per day suddenly crashed and now you are struggling to pray for five, hours, five minutes. Has it ever happened to you? Let me see your hands up. Raise it up, raise it up, raise it up, raise it up, raise it up. Amen. Let me shock you. Can I shock you? I have been there. Have you ever found yourself? Are you with me now? Preaching purity with brimstone and fire. Then suddenly you find out that there is an affection growing on the inside of you for the opposite sex. And you fasted and prayed and it appears as if that thing will not leave you. Have you found yourself in that area? Raise up your hand if you find your sincere people in the house. Raise up your hand. I know there are virgin ladies here that don't have that feelings. Sincere people, raise up your hands here. Raise up your hand. Be very sincere. Only sincere people will go to heaven, though. Amen. Can I shock you? Can I shock you? I've been there. There was a time in my life that there's a certain sister. Are you with me? I had the good intention. I prayed and I fasted. I had. 
Are you with me? If she entered church like this, that sister prays so she fasts. And she, sometimes she doesn't use her ring. But immediately she enters anywhere. Are you with me now? I'm preaching or I'm doing anything. The anointing is still flowing. Strong sexual feelings for her. We start. Even if I'm in the pulpit. But you see, amen, we fall and we remain falling because we don't understand our escape. So this morning, God wants to open us to make us see. Are you with me? Amen. That there is an ordained escape for us. So, so that if we are trapped, it is not because the faithfulness of God has not given us an ordained escape. It's because, are you with me? It's because of two things. Number one, we are ignorant of it. Number two, we didn't engage them. So, on the day God brings his just judgment, are you with me? We will not escape. So this morning, praise God. Hallelujah. We want to, you see, because we have, we have the captain of our salvation that has felt all that we are feeling. Now, many of you thought it was when Jesus came into the body. That was when he felt what we are feeling. Even before that time, he, feel, he felt what we are feeling. I, I don't know how many of you have read the, you have read the Bible. The Bible says, in the affliction, he was afflicted. Eh? That's Isaiah. That's Isaiah. He said, in the affliction, he was afflicted. So it means everything they were experiencing in the wilderness, he was experiencing it too. They didn't know that he felt what he felt. When they were thirsty, he felt it. So even before he took on flesh, he's not an alien to our experiences. Therefore, he had made a way of escape for us. So now we'll read the verse we want to read in that chapter. Amen. Verse 13 now. Let's read verse 13. Okay. 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 Thank you for this, Isaiah. He said, in the affliction, what that's Isaiah chapter 63 verse 9. He said, in the affliction, he was what? Afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. You see, that angel of his presence is no other person but the Christ. The angel of his presence saved them because he was in their midst. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them and he bared them and carry them all the days of what? Of old. You see, they didn't know that it was the one carrying them. They felt what they what came upon them was heavy. Okay. Amen. If I carry Sister Tai on my head, and Sister Tai is carrying a load, eh? Who feels the weight more? Eh? Me. Now, Sister Tai is complaining about her load. And she's bombarding me that she's carrying her. I said, why will you subject me to this kind of load? Why will you make me go through this? But I was the one carrying her. And she's still insulting me. Can you imagine carrying an heavy load, the ass load? And you are, you are adding insult to it. Eh? So every time you murmur, that's what you do to God. Actually, what you, have, what you feel you are carrying, you are not the one carrying it, it's the one carrying it. Are, are you with me? You say, God, I, I, I will it be me that will be suffering this kind of sickness. You don't know that he, he suffered it. A amen. You don't know how that sickness feels if he has not tempered it. You think that headache is what they call headache? He felt it. 
because he bore it on himself. All the chastisement of your sickness, the Bible says he bore their infirmities. He, what, what did he do? Headache, pain, toothache, everything. He bore everything. He felt it. So you thought he has gone through those things and he has tempered it. He tempered it in such a way that when you are passing through it, you can bear it. If you didn't temper it, by now you will be dead. You, you think what you are going through. He had gone through it. So he made the pain a kind of a pain you can bear. So when you say, God, me, I can't carry this again, you're a liar. You are going to see, there is a way of escape he has made. Amen. Amen. See, none of us will have excuse before God, though. So if you say, ah, that thing was too much for me. It came in a way that I cannot bear it. You actually lied. You can't. Because the scripture says you can't. And your experience does, cannot make the scripture a lie. The scripture is true. Your experience is a lie. Are you following me? So let's read. He said, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as common to men. You see, I deliberately brought this thing up so that we can, we can understand the Greek word. Amen. Hallelujah. Such as what? Common. Tempered. Normal. And not beyond the capacity of strength of a man. So it is something that can be handled by you. So if we fail in it, are you with me now? Eh? We owe God an apology. Because he has done everything to make it possible for us to pass through that thing without failing him. So if we fail, Amen. Amen. It is not because he has not done what he should do. Now, you see, I know a great number of people this morning will be disappointed because when I talk about our escape, they will be, they will be thinking we are bringing one big revelation of our escape from poverty. Seven keys on how to escape marital abuses no that's not what i'm bringing i'm bringing you his words to show you our escape as we transit the earth into heaven our escape as we journey in this path of faith our our escape as in this warfare. So that you can know that you can start well and finish well. Because there are way of escape. May God give you grace to follow it. Yeah. I can't hear you say loud amen to that. How yeah. many of you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? There's a way of escape. How can a young sister start and not defile herself before marriage? There's a way of escape. And if a sister has defied herself, how can she rise? There's a way of escape. Is there a way of escape for you in ministry and not be greedy? There is a way of escape. He has made it. Now, you see, temptations will come. I said something yesterday. How many of you know that there's no fornication in God? There's no lust in God. There's no greediness in God. There is no hunger in God. Are you with me now? There's no wickedness in God. Amen? Amen. 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 But who created hunger? Somebody will say, no, it's not God. So I want to ask, who created food? So when he created food, doesn't that show you that he has created something on the inside of man that will make him eat? Now, he made that thing, are you with me now, so that you can eat. And the eating is in three dimensions. Eating. 
eating to make your body strong because the temple of God. Eh? Are you with me now? Eating to make your spirit strong because that's the altar of communion. And eating to quicken your soul because it becomes the channel of expression where your body is instructed by your spirit. Uh, you don't understand me. How many of you understand what I'm saying? So that's why God is concerned about your spirit, soul, and body. That's why the Bible says it's the word of God dividing the spirit and the soul. God designed it that way. But you see, the devil, because the devil is evil, he takes advantage of those things to tempt a man. So you know what God does? There is nothing God that has the capacity to tempt a man because God does not have evil. So God will prepare you. The enemy will tempt you. Like your teachers will prepare you. It is another man that will examine you. Eh. Hello? Even in universities, there is something we call an external supervisor. External examiner. They don't come, they are not in your school. They will come from elsewhere. Then they will sit on what you have what, what you have written. But who are the people that are preparing for the external examiner? Are they not your lecturer? Yeah, they are the lecturer. So what God does is that God prepares you. Then the enemy comes to tempt you. So the education of God, are you with me now? is to fortify you with all it takes to face the examiner. Because after the examiner is done, are you with me now? You will enter a face in God that will confer on you treasures of heaven. What do I say? You people are not here. Treasures of what? Now you see, omissions now begin to speak in the days the tempter come. So every training you missed in God... It's an advantage for the tempter. Hello, church. Uh, hello. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because the trainings of God does not just educate your mind. It gives, it gives you a nature in God that makes you strong in the day of temptation. See, let me tell you this. So. Every instruction about hunger flies away when hunger comes. When you are in Biribiri, and then they say, you see, the first day, try to reserve your energy. You understand now? Because the second day is always very tough. And then you are trying to reserve your energy. Then the second day came. And you discover that all your reserve of energy is gone. You discover that that instruction did not work. Now, you see, if over time you have not gotten a nature that is resilient, a nature that can persevere. A nature that can suffer long. The second day of the fast, you will end the fast. In spite of all your instructions. So you see, it is not a classroom experience. We are teaching you to bat a nature. In the day when you have not caught that nature, are you following me? The day the tempter comes, it becomes a gap in your existence. Are you following me, please? Ah, oh, I don't think you understand what I'm saying. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Are you getting life instruction here this morning? It becomes a gap in your experience, in your, in your existence. It becomes a place where a loophole. You know, the Yoruba people, they say, if there is a crack, the lizard will have a space. Do you know that? So you see, when you miss your training, then you have placed a gap for the lizard of the enemy, the tempter, to have a space. You see, amen. We cannot pray and say your mission will not speak. Well, we can pray. We can pray. Do you want to pray? I want you to cry to God. Because you know what? I found out that one way or the other, some one way or the other, are you with me now? A great number of us, our training is not on. You missed something. Oh, you are not with me. I mean, if understand what I'm saying now. And you see, the tempter will come. And you know something? That your teacher did not teach you the full syllables. 
does not mean work will not set according to standard. You people are not here now. The way you people are responding this morning is, is frightening me. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Abby? Will you tell why I can say anti didn't teach us? They will still set the exam according to standard. So, and you know, you can't tell them and say, Hey, the day they were teaching latitude and longitude. Hey, I miss class. Oh. Can you tell why that one? The day they were teaching consonant and vowel sounds. I was sick. So I didn't come. Will you tell why that one? Part of speech. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now they tie all those things together and then you become a good English user. One day I was preaching here, my father in faith was around. Then after the preaching, he called me and said, that English you spoke is, is the wrong one. You don't speak that way. You know, it's an English teacher. I'm always afraid to speak English when he's around. He marks my grammar seriously. So I did, I'm not learning God alone in him. I'm learning grammar. Ah! Daddy uses English. You know, one day I want to speak English and impress him. After I said the jagos I want to say, then he called me around. He said, that's not how to say it. <laughs> I was humble that day. I was sweating under air condition. <laughs> you, know, you know what I said that day? I wanted to say evidence. I wanted to say benefits, so I said evidence. He said, that's not how to say it. He said, you give an elder the benefit of age, not an evidence of age. So when you want to use that English, you say we give him benefit of doubt. It's a benefit of experience. Then he began to expand shit. Kai. I left that place. You know, sometimes you think you are speaking grammar. You're only sinning against the innocent God of grammar. It went well. Samaka Monsu Ebundada. Including myself. In fact, one man, one, one, one English teacher said, pastors commit so much grammatical blunders when they preach. I said, God understand. And the church member understand. Should be you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> ah. So in fact, you see, you see, most times we also have to go back and learn some English. You know why? Because there are men that understand English. When you are preaching, they will get your message, but you will offend them. <laughs> they will get your message, but they will offend, you will offend them. So, you see, what led us into this is that why we set it according to standard? And when the tempter comes, the tempter does not want to know you miss something. Are you following me? He yes, will tempt you according to standard. This is why we miss it. Will you pray? And say in every area of omission, grace speak for me. Lord, I seek your grace and mercy. I just hope somebody will cry this morning. Hey. Be sincere. Yes, I see some sincere people here. Can we cry to God and beg him? In every area of omission that can wreck me in this journey of faith, let grace and mercy speak for me. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. How many of you have seen the matter now? So let me quickly even bring this in before I even go into the matter of escape that God has made. That one vital escape, are you, for, are you with me? For us in this journey, are you with me? Is to be thoroughly made.
Don't be true with me yet, Lord. Sit down. Break and mold me thoroughly. Affect my life with your finger. As I move. Don't be true with me yet, Lord. Break and mold me thoroughly. If you know that song, sing with me. Affect. You see, being broken and being made thoroughly is vital and key to our escape. Otherwise, you will be coming to fellowship and you will be smoking secretly. Because something has not affected your appetite. You will not be able to stand prayer pressure. Are you with me? Your, your character will change like the color of a chameleon. The environment will determine your character each time. Why? <laughs> Are you with me? Because you have not been thoroughly made. A little pressure will make you beg. There are many of us here. Eh? Many of us. The way we beg people for money. little thing so you see that becomes a ground for the enemy to capture you are you with me because the enemy knows that this is a gap you know what he does he, and he's looking for everything to make sure that he puts God to shame about your life we write work every year Abby. but if all of us pass every year why could not make profit? <laughs> Abby? Eh? So those of you that will go back and retake, it's an additional profit. What I'm trying to say is this, that, are you with me? If you pass, the enemy has no trophy. But if you fail, he rejoices. So he's looking for a way to make you fail. And everything he can exhaust he will take advantage of. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? So you can you can beg anybody for anything. You are not restrained. You want comfort at any cost. You don't want anything to push you under pressure. You have not come to understand that anything you seek and you didn't find is because God is not giving you. But you have been taught to understand that, so, um, that when you pull something and it's not coming, it's the devil resisting you. So you want to get it at all cost. You have prayed. You have fasted. You have believed. You have done that which you should do, humanly speaking, in the path of righteousness. And that thing is not coming. Rest. God is saying no. Did you hear me? Eh? Did you hear me? You now, some of my children are aware of something that we are trusting God for now. Amen. We are trusting Mufo. My wife came to me yesterday and said, Be very careful the way you talk to people about this. And I said, No, I'm not talking to anybody. I only talk so, so, and so. And we are trusting God. You know something? If it is the perfect will of God, He will make a way. So you want this at all costs. You just want to pay the debt at all costs. Not at Jesus' cost. So you go to Sister Rachel, can you give me 2,000? You go to Sister Blessing, can you give me 5,000? You go to Sister Kendi, and Sister Kendi, Grace. What's the name of that in that? Grace? Eh? Grace Fashion World. My God. Can you, you can see Grace. It's Grace Fashion World. 
Abba. Is that not a big name? Is that says said Grace Fashion World, please? Can you? This is Grace Fashion World, Grace International. Can you please give me? So you see, are you with me now? You go to Grace with disgrace. Because now you have borrowed money from almost six people among the brethren. Where's your dignity? How many of you understand what I'm saying? How many of you know that it is good to go with two, three clothes until it pleases God to begin to bring you designer without paying? If I should say this one, all of you will still laugh. That everything I'm wearing now, <laughs> are you with me? Including the butter. This cameraman, stop that when you are doing. You know, he's trying to view me from. <laughs> no, many of you are looking at me and say, How do you know? Eh? Immediately he picked his lens at me. I felt it in my body. I felt it like a red light from my head to my feet. So that was why I told him to stop it. Amen. I didn't know how much they sell it. I didn't know how much they bought it. I'm only wearing it. Whether it is designer, I don't know. Whether it is cheap, I don't know. Whether it is expensive, I don't know. But can I say this to you? There was a time I trekked from all over the of this compound to Christ's comprehensive high school. No shoe. Barefooted. How many of you know Christ's comprehensive high school? Has that ever happened to you? Eh? That you trek to school barefooted. Not in primary school, secondary school. If any one of you sitting here has ever had that experience, raise up your hand. Secondary school, you trek from your house to school. No shoe. Not with between slippers. My friends that I call friends abandoned me because they are wearing canvas. I will never forget one. It was a sister. And she saw me crying. And she came close. I said, Abraham, close here. Then she looked at my feet. She was the only one that was walking with me. Did we go to school? You know Tofumi's mother? Sister, I praise. She was the only one that tripped with me that took us compared to that. So many of you don't know where our friendship started from. <laughs> I'm just opening your eyes to it. That's why you see, most of the time I have my ears for that woman. Don't blame me. <laughs> uh, You know, I've ever wore a trousers that I was in school that had holes here. And then she like gifted me one short naked because I could because we couldn't afford one. He gifted me one short naked, but he had a, a zip problem. So here is open. So anytime I tore him, I tore him like this. <laughs> to cover this place. Then one of our teachers one day wanted to disgrace me in the sight of everybody and say, Tore him very well. And I told him, I said, sir. My zip is, I showed him, then he slapped me. In the presence of everybody on the assembly. I said, turn your shirt. So I turned in. Then everybody on the assembly saw my trousers and they laughed and they, and they started laughing. My friend, Dipo Wosheni, was grieved. He was angry. He felt like he hit that teacher. My brother is in Canada, Isaac. He was crying with me on the other side there. Are you with me? I was in a meeting one day when they brought his wife. She had paralysis. And I cited her. I knew it was my teacher's wife. She also knew me. So I prayed for her. So they told her husband that we saw one of your students. Then they gave me a description. Then he realized I was the one. The, the small boy disgraced. Now I'm not saying that to mock him. I'm only telling you this. <laughs> Can I say this to you? 
Can you be patient for God's dealing over your life? And stop looking for corners. Short, shortcuts. Let me ask you, can I ever in my life again, by the message of the Lord, not by anything, no, but by the message of the Lord, wear a trousers that has a zip problem? Can I say this to you? What you are going through has been tempered by God. It is not an isolated one. You know, many of you think you are suffering when you are in school now, but when I told you my, you know yours bow before my. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Eh? It's, it's not even but it prostrated before my. Okay, look at my life. If they ever told you I ever went through that, will you ever believe it? Talk to me, church. Eh? You don't know where Augusta Ado Farm is. How many of you know where Augusta Ado Farm is? Okay, Lekan. Akwamu, you know where? How far is it? Eh? Eh? It's very far. Do you know I've trekked to that farm twice? Wake up very early in the morning, go. Then bring a load down home. So we leave around 5 a.m. So we get to the farm around um, 6.30. Did you hear me? Not by bike, oh. You trek. Even six starters because you walk very fast. You are walking like a soldier. Wah, 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 wah. And you know if a man treks for one and a half hours. Trekking fast. If you don't trek well, at least you spend two hours on the road. So we now carry load from that place. Bring it very early in the morning. So that by nine, we're already at home. We drop the load, then we go back. We come back with another load in the evening. I slept in that place. My sister and my brother, we slept there. Oh, that's went on all day. We went to farm. We disappeared from the town. And stayed there. Are you with me? For one week. It was Saturday we came back home. We came back Saturday to come and attend Sunday service. And then Monday we went back and stayed there again. We didn't sleep on a cemented ground. You know Abba. Two on Ileko. Becker and Leoni Bagbo, Bijana Tilebe. He won your Sashagun, Baba Yoja Fuo. Shade. Ekele Dokun Ti Yeshu Shabbat Ekele Ile Fele Mono That's why for the rest of my life I will honor Evangelist MF Ademi and Daddy S.A.B. Ademi that man there. I didn't know what they saw in me the two of them. They were the reason why I went to school. That day, I practically paid my school fees. Because my uncle could not afford it. There was a day they sent us out of school. That was the day they sacked him. They sent us out of school. Daddy was not in school, so they sent us out. And then they said, we should go and get our school fees. So we wanted to go to him to meet him because we were having exams. Then we meet him at the road. We got to the road. Then they told, then some people said, where are you going? We said, want to go and see. He said, go back home. He's at home. We now look at the time. He should be at work. So we said, let's go back home. Then we had people talking about being sacked. So, when we got back home, myself and my brother is in Canada. I told him, say, excuse me. So we saw him, say, Baba, say, what are you doing? He said, they told us to say, don't worry, I will send it to Ademi uh, tomorrow with a note. And then we are going to pay your school fees. So, you know, me, I was, me, I'm bold. My elder brother is not a man, he's not a talking, but me, I'm very audacious. So I said, Baba, I had these people saying they sacked them. I hope you are not sacked too. Then he smiled and said, yes. The three of us busted into tears. Because though his salary was a very small thing, that was all we depended on to go to school. Now he's sacked. How do we go to school?
Our father is dead. Our mother is nowhere to be found. The uncle we had that would take us to school, now he's sacked. But today, my brother is in Canada. This is me. By the grace of God. Do I look like a man that has experienced that in life? I want to tell you this morning, there is a way of escape for you. Ordained by God. What you are going through now, please understand this. Oh, if you fall in it, it is because you chose to fall. a time there was no food in the house and then we didn't eat anything in the morning we didn't eat we didn't eat there was no hope of anything we were going to eat so he was not eating then he knew we are not eating the two of us were outside and he came and he said isaac abraham Bolewa. so we quickly had our tears because we know that our tears can break him you, you now see the reason when when they tell me that anything affects that man you see you see <laughs> many of you don't know why i love him so much you know, most of the time when, when I talk about this experience, I shed tears. There was a day we were fighting my elder brothers that they didn't do anything for us and everything. Then, he came and then he was shouting, why will you wear my clothes? Because they used to wear their clothes. They would put their shirt and their anger. So, because we had no clothes, I want to go somewhere. Then we sneak in. <laughs> and pick one of their shirt, then we wear it and we go. In fact, we used to wear their shoes. That's the way we live our life. I mean, Brother Mike and Brother Noah. So, I was somewhere sleeping. Then, he now, he now came back and said, oh, he was talking to his wife. Then his wife said, why would you two be wearing big, big clothes that they cannot wear? This shirt that you are buying, they will wear it. That was what the wife was saying. Then he said, mm, mm, mm. They didn't know I was earning. I was earning them. He now said, see, one can have the money. He said, I didn't buy clothes for them. So let me buy the ones that they can wear. So when they stick in, they can pick my clothes and wear it because I didn't buy any clothes for them. They never, they never knew I had them saying it. So it is the word that will now say, if they are not going to say, but I say, Rashati come. Oh, I Because we had no clothes. There was a year that it was Christmas. Everybody were bringing out new clothes. There was nothing for me and Isaac to wear. So, but I'm like, I'm brand new. I called and said, I said, Shat, we And he said, I had this shirt. Then the other one said, I have this one. This one can size Isaac. This one can size Abraham. So the two of them called us and gave them and gave us those shirts. That was what we wear for Christmas. I'm bringing you practical life experiences to show you. Are you with me now? That there's no need for you to lose your integrity. You see, at that time, I was still a very good Christian. No bitterness. I wasn't envying anybody, even when my shoes like this. I would still wear it with joy. We still rock the streets together with my friends. They had the best. Are you with me? And my, my, my uncle's wife, Baba, will come and tell us and say, Waro Siloni, Waram Bolola. 
Allah to ni gbe lo ni gbo suka e so rire she will pray she will say that of her so we are encouraged though there are people around that will discourage us so in fact there are some men they look us on they they look us say aroko bi enda awon agatu olu awon nko la gatu can i speak upon your life this morning whatever you are going through now cannot damage your future yeah. listen if god in his mercy has brought me into purpose and today every man looks at my life and they say ha ah, god i help this man listen to me he that help me will help you yeah. oh your amen is very good i say we will help you he yeah. that preserve me will preserve you there is a way of escape. It's not the end of your life. So stop borrowing money all around. I know some of you have cried this morning hearing my story. It means that I'm telling the story, I'm not crying, but it has touched you seriously. That so this man has went through this. Amen. Are you still here? Now you see, then I had gift. You know, I, 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 the gift of the spirit was there. <laughs> I could see vision. I could see things. So the people know that there's power with me. So I had girls that could bring me stuff. I tell you the truth in God, I lie not. There was a girl one day that fried. We call it, you don't understand that thing. Many of you are very young. If I'm speaking to those of you, that, those, some, 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 some that are more older, I'm still young. But I'm older than all of you here. Amen. There's something we call it Kefuji. That's what we call it there. You know it? God bless you. Oh, you, you, have, been, you have been here a while. You have been here a while. Do I know? Do I know you are still a boy? <laughs> but you have been here a while. I know and you know Kefuji because we come from the same country. We use it for pepper. Huh? The girl fried egg. Fool the whole thing. And that she looked at my leg and saw the kind of betrothal slippers were wearing because the betrothal slippers had holes. So she went and bought a new betrothal slippers. The size on her legs. No, no, I mean the color, the kind on her legs. She bought that one for me and put it with bread. Then after a series of prophecy in the church, as I finished prophesying and I settled down, I left the church. She quickly ran after me and brought those things. Now, that thing she had had a complaint that I needed a biro, I needed a pencil, I needed some books. She put all those and packaged it and bring it to me, and brought it to me. Now, when she continued that way, some of my friends called me and said, "This girl has interest in you." I said, "It's not possible." I said, "It's not possible." I said, "She's just been, she's just been nice." They say, "Ha!" Ah. She had interest. In so they said, "Now observe that any time you see another person sitting beside you, see what will happen." Then I started observing. Any time any other sister sit beside me. There will be war. Now listen to me. Listen. I'm talking about way of escape. Now it is now for me either to receive that offer of the devil. Keep eating good egg and keep receiving gift. Or I say no. Then I retain my destiny. What I'm trying to say to you is that I also was offered another exit plan of the enemy. But I said no to it. So I began to preach her to be born again. But she didn't become born again. Are you with me? Are you with me? So, I had to say no to the free egg, free fried eggs and on bread. So I continue with the Ila Lase Potio Lepo that we used to take in my house. How many of you have eaten a soup that has no palm oil? Has it ever happened to you? Many times. Good. There's something they call on la. Dry okra. You see, there was a time we were so poor that we had no money for salt. So we have to eat that dry okra that way. No pepper. <laughs> Man. Man. I don't know what 
I cannot eat now, even if I want to eat a cow, eh? if I say I want to buy a cow now and slaughter it because I want to, I can afford it. By the message of the Lord. In fact, I have people that if I say I want to eat a cow now, one of my daughters told me, say, Daddy, anything you want to eat, just let me know. And I asked her, I said, even if it's a cow, you say, Daddy, I'll go along car. <laughs> I laughed. Last Sunday, that was Easter. Abi, is that Easter? The, the Easter Sunday. The upper one. Upper one. When I wore the suit I wore, I was close to tears. You know why? Because there was a time in my life I was wearing rags. I didn't know. I, 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 it was my privilege I got to know how much they bought it. Apostle used Google. When he saw the price, he screamed. <laughs> I said, that kind of price, you don't say it on the pulpit. Eh? Because men can come. Okay. And they will naked you. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you this morning as a way of encouraging you that where God is taking you to, you will get there. Yeah. And you know something? See, let me tell you this. This thing that you have been subjected to is part of your process. You see, it has helped me. It has helped me. So we will stay in that our building that doesn't have good tears until God says we are going. Have you ever seen me squeeze my face because of that year? Eh? Have you ever seen me? No, it doesn't bother me. Because he has trained me over time to be used to that kind of lifestyle. So whether we have the best or we have the worst, we are satisfied. That is the process. If there's an omission in that process now, if God anoints you, your anointing will serve covetousness. You will be a greedy anointed man of God. Are you with me? So, amen. You are not following me. If I see here, say amen. So the day God brings rich men under you, they will suffer. They will suffer. You know why? Because anytime you go to them, say, ah, I like this, you know, can you buy it for me? Now, you're coming, they've planned that we are going to spend 100,000 naira. Then you came around, and because they have regard for you as a man of God, then you say, ah, do you have any shopping mall here? I just want to window shop. They say, ah, there are so many of them, daddy, let's take, let's take you there. Then they begin to wonder. I don't know what some men of God go to do when they go to minister. Me. If they take me to America, I will stay in my house and be praying. Except my host come and say, I'm a man of God. You have been there. And if God says, stay here, I will stay there. Must I go and snap a, a picture, take a shot in the snow before you know I went to America? Do I need that? That's why a great number of times, praise God, many people don't know we fly. We fly like wind. Have you ever for once seen my picture? I'm not saying the people that are doing it are sinners. Please don't misunderstand me. But have you ever seen my picture in the fly being posted online? And those things don't matter. It's not because we don't fly. Please, anybody that does, don't see them as saying now, that's not the matter. But listen to me, I'm only telling you that those are not the things that count. Because the day you make them to count, then you have given the devil a gap in your existence. He will, he will master that gap. And in no time, he will bring you down. See, I'm getting to the time I will bring it to a close. Because I need to get to a room. But listen to me. Let me say this and emphasize it before I, before I leave. That one critical area that God has given, are you with me? If you're serious, say amen. amen. That God has given, are you with me now? Yes, As our escape is the area of being thoroughly made. And see, sometimes the Lord permits it for you to go through terrible things as your process of making. You know why? Because where God is taking you to, you must be tough enough to stand there. Did you hear me? Eh? But if God will make you the kind of prophet Abraham's wife, you think your process will not be strong? I was talking.
to my wife one day and she told me while we while we were traveling while we are traveling because that one is a journey while we are traveling on legs to a place she was traveling on legs with her grandmother down to Henry. I never knew she went through that process too. When they train a captain, their horses are also trained. So my dear daughter, that thing you are going through, God permitted it so to make you tough. Because you are to handle something that is great for him in the future. Don't break. Sit under that process. Because, are you with me now? Don't exit it. The enemy is telling you, hey, 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 hey. Find it easy. Run away. Don't run. Stay there. Let God make you very tough. The devil will throw everything at you, but God will keep you here. You see? You, are, you, are, you, are you with me now? You see, everything that the devil is throwing through you, don't worry. You know, I just told you, Jesus has tempered it in a way that he cannot destroy you. Um, I cannot go further. Can you give me other versions of the Bible? Let's stay here. Please, let me ask you this question. Have your time been wasted this morning? Yes, Have you learned something? Yes, sir. Let me say this to you. There was a time my brother, my elder brother is in Canada now. The only certificate he had, are you with me now, was NC. Why? Listen, I, I'm talking about my, we, we call ourselves twin brother, my twin brother. He's in Canada. Because we were born the same year. Now many of you that attend the same local assembly with me know him, Isaac. While I graduated from the university, what Isaac still had then was NC. You know he was working. So while I was in school and I was struggling to do one or two things, my brother will get his, he will get his very small salary and slash it to two and send part to me. You know, he's, he's, he's always a very wonderful big brother. There was a day I entered Lagos and he saw the kind of shoe I was wearing. He felt bad. So when he got his money, he went and bought one shoe because we are almost of the same size. See, Abraham, Oh, yeah, well, so and when I wore it, he said, it's for you. I looked at him that day. He will buy shirts. Anytime I come around and say, ah, I saw one guinea here, it will be very good for you. And then he will buy those things. But he was still with NC. But you know something? He stayed with God. He stayed with God. I'm, I'm his younger brother. We were born the same year, but he has some months ahead of me. And when I tell him, bro, stay here. Don't leave. That's the instruction of God. Isaac will stay. Isaac will stay. Then he rose to the peak, to, to a size, a peak in the place of his work, then in Tata. Then something happened that implicated him. He slept in prison. He lost the job. I wept. I said, God, not now. I never knew that God was taking through the process. Then from there, somebody asked him to come to Russia. And then he showed me the thing. We started praying. God said this in it. Then he traveled to Russia. NC. Now we call him professor. We call him what? The certificate that Isaac has now. I don't have it. He stayed with God. Who told you that it is certificate that will make you be great in life? Should I tell you what opened up for him? Eh? It was by prophecy. The hands of God touched him. He said, you, 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 go and join choir. <laughs> so when he joined the choir, um, Omeleke, that was the choir master there. And all of them, all of you are useless in choir. What are you doing? Isaac said, me, I can be conga. He said, conga. Is that what? We, anybody can do that one. So Isaac went and learned some drum. It was beating the said drum that opened door for him in Lagos. It was beating the said drum that opened door for him. Because the man that asked him to come to Russia, they met where they were playing instrument together. The man could use keyboard. Isaac could use a drum. So they became friends. So when he lost the job, the man had about it and said, can you come to Russia? He left for Russia. Can I say this to you? Even the door of Canada opened because of that thing. There is something that God wants to give to your process. That is a way of escape in the future. If you miss it, you will miss destiny. Hmm? 
Amen. Look at me. Isaac is not where he is today because he had a certificate. But, but because he completed the cycle of the process. My brother fought me tooth and nail last year and said, you must come over to Canada. I said, me, come inside cold. Allah Maji. He said, don't worry. When I take all your, when I take your wife and children, I say, Mamu, I will come once a while to visit you during summer. He said, and when you come with trap, I say, you can't. And you know I'm a prophet. <laughs> Who could ever say that he will be among the whites? He had, he had no such dreams. But see what process has done to him. Can I say this to you? Your way of escape, the way of escape that please don't allow omission. And we are still going to cry to God again. Every area of omission. Because can I say this to you? I have found out that those areas of omission are actually the areas where God gives a man the tool of escape. Amen. Because those areas of omissions are supposed to be the area where the tempter tempts you most. Are you still here? Help me tell the person I say complete the cycle. Oh, come on, tell that person. Complete the cycle. Now, let's read, let's read, let's read, let's read this version. Which version is this? Eh? It's still King James now. Okay. Now, see this one. The message says, no test or temptation that comes your way is beyond the course of what others have had to face. Okay, when I begin to tell you my story now, how many of yours was as tough as mine? Eh? But you know you are complaining now. I know many of you must beg God to forgive you this morning. But you ask me, sir, in this season, what's your way of escape? Can I tell you? God prepared an uncle for me that we can bear those things together. You know, in English language, you call him an uncle. But in your what do you call him? Bahami. But the only way you can understand it in English is to call him uncle. That's what that's that's it. Okay, let me ask you. If God had not prepared that uncle, will I survive? Eh? Because there are people that went through my own and they didn't have any uncle to help them. So there are six of men that their own is more tougher than mine. And you know something? Theirs is, theirs is tougher than mine because they have something very tough in the future they are to handle for God. If they carve in, they will not fulfill that destiny. There is a script that God is writing with your life. Can you allow God to finish that script? And not allow the devil to end it? Because many times when God starts writing the script, it is the devil that finished the last chapter. That will not be your Lord. Yeah. There is a way of escape. Oh, your father died when you were when, when small. My younger sisters... The last born of my mother did not know our father facially. It was when she grew up and we showed her the picture. Dorcas, Daniel, Leah, Kemi, Rhoda, Jacob, they didn't know him. Even Solomon was still a lad, though he knows his father. Okay, if me that they call Baba now, because that's what they call me, Baba. Though we are very, 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 very loving my family. Praise God. We can come and say, but we call ourselves that way. It's a good thing. In fact, I know families that they call their elder brother by name. 
and they say enjoying themselves. He's a very good thing. He's a loving one. We call ourselves. We call us. Rebecca, my younger sister, can look at me and say, oh, oh seriously. And then I will, I will laugh. Are you following me? If me, that they called Baba, I was 10 years old when my father died. How old were they? So I was the size of this boy. In fact, he's older than me when my father died. What can this boy know? What experience of life does he have? So then we'll be talking about Anyafe. He's even asleep now. Okay, he's not asleep. Oh, he's trying, he's trying to get it. He's looking for it. He's still searching for it. Amen? Others had faced something bitter than yours. So in the days when you begin to cry, say, ah, you don't know what I faced. I had to do what I did because of what I faced. You have no excuse. All you need to remember is that God will never let you out. There is a way of escape. We are going to study that very well. Amen. Tomorrow is Thursday. Are you with me? Tomorrow is Thursday now. Eh? Tomorrow is Thursday. So we meet on Friday. Same time. Is that okay with you? Are you attending any wedding? Wedding ceremony. So nine we meet on Friday. Are you okay? So we can finish this matter. Is, are you okay? Now you see. God will not let you down. He will never let you be pushed past what? Your limit. So it means, excuse me, ma. That thing that you say, ah, it's a strong pressure. It, it, is, it is still within your limit. You still have the capacity to stand it. So if you carve in, it is not because there's no energy to carve in. It's not because there's no energy to stand. It is because you just decide to give in. <laughs> Hello, are you with me? So we have no excuse. There is a way out. See, you are living among those kind of people because of the kind of people God wants to send you to. You see, why you are giving in is because you have not been taught and now you have been taught. So align. Align. He will always be there to help you come through it. That's why I love one of our hymns. He said, ah, mm-hmm. In the midst of a fierce battle, he will stand there with you. He said it. He said, when you go through water, I will go with you. He didn't say you won't go through it. He didn't say, hey, Richard, I will not allow you to go through it. He said you will go through it, but I will stand there with you. So third person says, go through it with the Lord. Amen. Amen. So that this you need food. And food will not come. Suffer hunger with the Lord. Because in that hunger, He's standing with you. Maybe don't pine him. Amen. Amen. Can you endure empty pocket with integrity until it pleases the Lord to fill your pocket? Don't go and borrow. Don't go and sell yourself. Don't go and sell your gift. Don't go and sell ministry for money. Because many of you desire great utterance. Now, some of you can start an exalted altar where they will pay you every time you go and minister, where they will give you an honorarium of $3,000. And they gather 13,000 pounds for you. 13,000 what? Pounds. For you, you know. There are men that receive such honorarium 13,000 pounds. If they convert 13,000 pounds to Nera, I know some people want to bring out their calculator now. 
Okay, help us calculate it. They give you 13,000 pounds. Or they give you 20,000 pounds. People collect 25,000 pounds as an honorary. The zeros you are going to have after it will, will scare you. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. You know, let us say, ha! Is it 13, Abby? Eh? One day. But you know those men that collect that work? Do you know what they have been through? Eh? Do you know what they have been through? Do you know what they have been through? Should I tell you? Eh? They have days that they have to track. And some of them stayed with one cloth until that cloth was threadbare. Ministering unto the Lord. Then they please the Lord to give them the power. And then one day, you wake up one day. You have not seen process in your life. Oh. You are asking for an altar that will make you stand on an exalted altar. Exalted. A man that is below. That has not been exalted. Sitting for exalted altar. Only. I think is that calculation is wrong, Abby. And pounds is more than dollars. Amen. Let's talk mathematics. Praise God. Let's calculate it over here. Kill on my will see. So Oh my God. Amen. How much is that? So, in one. So if you do seven days, you come back and then you say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Are you with me? But can you wait with empty pocket until it pleases the Lord to take you to such a place? Before the land that is flowing with milk and honey, there is a dry wilderness where you will suffer thirst, where you will suffer hunger. Will you endure the wilderness before you get there? Or you want to murmur? And you know something that God was doing to them in the wilderness? He was making them tough for war. Because they've never fought anyone in their life. So God was training them like a soldier. And you know when you are fighting, you don't complain and say, I'm thirsty. Because when you are looking for water, they can just, you finish it. Amen. Amen. So allow God to take it. Can we have another version? Let's read one more version. Which version is this? Passion translation. He said, We all experience times. How many? Nice. We. How many of us? So it means you, you are not. We all experience times of testing, which is normal for every human being. But God will be faithful to you. He will screen and filter what? The severalty, nature, and timing of every test or trial you face so that you can bear it. Do you see that one? So God had done everything he needed to do with that process. Go through it. Refuse to go through it is to judge God to be unfaithful. I 
and if death is an opportunity to trust him what more for along with every trial god provided for you a way of escape that will bring you out of it how victoriously did you see that so let me ask this simple question is there any reason for us to fall Is God justified when many of them fell in the wilderness? Is he justified? Talk to me. There is a way of escape. Stand on your feet. We'll continue on Friday. How many of you, how many of you how many of you had the touch of God this morning? Eh? Close your eyes. We're going to sing that song. Don't be true with me yet, Lord. Break and mold me how? Thoroughly. Thoroughly. Affect my life with your fingerprints as I look to you for life. Amen. Then we pray. Are you ready? There are many things the Lord will show us in the course of this. See, listen to me. I am telling you we can go through it without failing. God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. Are you ready? Oh Jesus. Arada kosi barati na mazi antela kosha da baladaya. Aradisa. Don't be true with me. Raise your heart and raise your voice. We can hold me to Affect my life with your fingerprint. Oh. As I lose you. One more time. Don't be true with me, yet, Lord. Sing it. Don't be true with me, yet, Lord. Raise your heart and raise your voice to him. It's a cry. Thank 
watu wana madhaba hata leo I want you to see God once again and say God in every area of formation show me mercy show me mercy can you cry this morning that in your mercy you will not permit any omission because one window of escape that you have shown us this morning is that we are thoroughly made <clears throat> because when he that we tempt we tempt he will tempt according to the standard and when he that we tempt we tempt he looks for gap in our existence that we will not fail you because you have made every provision we ask in your mercy give no room for any omission yeah. and could there be any omission father we don't mind if it means repeating that glass so that this future can be great and glorify you take us to the process again this morning that in areas we are taking us back is no longer possible there is grace there is mercy 
There is grace. There is mercy. The stumbling tongue of Moses was the grace for Aaron. Lord, you can staff our weakness and bring glory out of it for your name's sake. Lord, this morning, we ask, in those areas where there are omissions and you cannot take us back through the class again, let your grace and mercy speak for us, O God. Lord, we are asking for this because on no ground must the enemy have reason to glory over you because of our life. Father, do this because of Jesus for us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. By the grace of God, we meet on Friday. At the same time, Apostle. Okay, amen. Praise the Lord. Now, you know, we are using these chairs at the crusade ground. So, you help us pack it back. And there, there are some certain things, there are some certain equipment too that we are going to move to the place. Are you with me? So, you help us with them. And it shall be well with you all in Jesus' name. Same time, same venue on Friday. The Lord keep us till that time in Jesus' name. Amen. And I want to pray a prayer that some of you may laugh, but it's not a laughing matter. Prevent or rapture comes before that time. In his mercy, we shall be with him. Amen. You know, that's one of the messages we don't preach again. Because we have become very ambitious. We think rapture cannot come. The just only day ministry what move for fear. You also want to fire abroad to preach. So what God is preparing for is a preaching, not a heaven. Because God shows mercy. Amen. We meet again on Friday by His mercy. Can we share the grace time fellowship and the grace? Go in peace. God bless you.